is a pleasure to speak to the chairman of the group, Mr. Kutubuddin Ahmad. May I request you to kindly join and welcome to the talk, sir. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Sandeep, for arranging this program. And good evening, very good evening to our viewers and listeners. And uh, let's uh, start uh, our conversation. We're ready to uh, talk. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So as you know, sir, uh, this, uh, the situation of this crisis, it has been a huge crisis and it has affected everyone. The supply chain is totally affected. And uh, what is the situation in Bangladesh right now for this crisis at the moment? Uh, Bangladesh is nothing indifferent from the rest of the world. So we are also uh, suffering with uh, COVID-19. And uh, so far, the 215 countries are affected, and we are one of them. Our situation is uh, in terms of, if we give you little statistics, then uh, it's something our uh, total uh, test done around 130,000 and then uh, positive, we got 15,700, which is around 12%. And recovered is uh, around uh, 3,000. And death, is, uh, death figure is 240 around. So this is the end. The lockdown is still going on. This started from March 26th. And 26th of May, it will remain lockdown. But government has relaxed. Uh, from uh, 26th of April for export uh, oriented industries to open slowly and staggeredly. So this is one thing. And then from yesterday, since we, as you know that we are having Ramadan and our biggest religious Eid festival is knocking. So they have allowed some of the shops to open, uh, but real big malls are not opening. Some shops are really open and uh, for the uh, customers. So this is uh, the development. The transport is not yet uh, started. Mass, mass transport especially. And 65% uh, uh, RNG factories, mostly. As you know, we export around uh, $40 billion. Uh, the dilemma is life and livelihood. The, this is the going on. We have to save lives or livelihood. So this is, you know, the, this the third world country or uh, developing countries, whatever you name it. Uh, they have this very uh, uh, consequence of the uh, um, COVID-19. It's, it's a very difficult situation, you know. Like uh, though government has announced a lot of packages, but even then. Uh, lot of uh, people got jobless our uh, as usual our jobless figure is high in addition to now this because of this crisis it has gone up though there is no official figure but it went significantly high no doubt especially uh, the uh, informal sector the laborers and others they are suffering a lot and the shopkeepers or the uh, shop owners they are also suffering because there is no customer, no consumers. Consumers didn't spending or they're not working. No, all construction stop, everything, as you know. So economy yeah. is at a standstill to some extent. But it is that a good is sign that at least 65% uh, of the export units have restarted, which is a very good sign, I think. And uh, does it mean that they all also have uh, you know orders because I believe there were a lot of cancellations of orders? Well, this is again biggest challenge. Uh, we have opened our factories, but uh, most of the factories order is concerned for how many days they can run. That is again a question because our country is depending, our export depends on uh, mostly Europe and America, the most uh, important figure, which is around perhaps 85 86 percent, both the Europe and America, including. Uh, UK, so I mean European Union, UK, and uh, USA all together should be somewhere 87 percent or something. So it's a huge figure, and America is struggling with the COVID-19. So as UK and uh, 
uh, Europe, European Union. So same. So our destinations are very vulnerable in vulnerable stage. So how long we can run the factory? That is also a big question. Still, uh, we yet to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Very honestly, the order we used to we received earlier that exactly we are now continuing. But new order. Uh, how we'll get, when we'll get, uh, that is a big uh, question, definitely. Yeah, it's a, uh, because it's a huge uh, impact on everyone, uh, entire supply chain from the consumers to the manufacturers, all kind of manufacturers in the supply chain. Yes. Also, we have seen the behavior of many buyers, you know, some have been, you know, very accommodating and some have been like, you know, do you think, uh, Buyers have taken undue advantage of Bangladesh industry when uh, millions of workers are losing jobs because of that. Mm, this is, you know, like everybody is suffering. Put it in this way. Buyers is also suffering. They are not indifferent from manufacturer or uh, supply chain, whoever, in the process. So we all are in the same boat. So this is uh, not that the buyers taking undue advantage. I will not put it in this way. But at this time, definitely, we need a lot of sympathy from buyers. Those who can really afford, uh, they should not cancel or delay their shipment. Even delay, that is also, uh, to some extent, we can ma manage or delay payment. But cancellation of the total order is a total disaster for the factory, as well as the workers. Workers will be jobless. That is the uh, big fear. But I will not say that they are taking undue advantage. As usual, they are asking for some discount with the manufacturers of garments and they are passing it to the bottom end in the downstream like we are textile owners. So we have always a, a discussion going on among us uh, how to accommodate each other. So this is sometimes, I say this is not an uh, undue advantage, but this is the reality. Yeah, because, because everybody is suffering and uh, but the main, main, main thing is that uh, there should be a spirit of accommodation, spirit of cooperation and trying to find solutions. Yes, this is a partnership program because we are not working with them for last couple of days only. We have been working with them for last couple of years. So they know us, we know them. So in good days we should remain together, in bad days also we should remain together. We should support each other so that everyone can get out of it. This is most important thing. It's not that, okay, I'm a textile owner, I'll do good, I'll make profit, but others will make loss. Then the whole system will collapse. Yes. So that's why I said that, okay, let's work together and let's understand each other and uh, let's behave rationally. And maybe coming out of this crisis, uh, maybe we will probably, I don't know, uh, it has been, it has been uh, estimated or your, you know that uh, there will be deeper partnerships between the buyer and suppliers you know uh, today it's like you know it's very easy for a buyer to go from one supplier to another supplier they just jump off to another supplier so I mean later on maybe probably we'll have a deep people will look for deeper uh, relationships uh, in particularly in our case we have a lot of nominated buyers so once the buyers nominated buyers means very difficult they, they will not jump because they are our we are their tested suppliers and and for us they are tested our buyers so this is a kind of relationship we maintain with each other so that uh, as i said in good days bad days we'll help each other we'll understand each other and we'll work together so i think crisis is for all it's not for me it's not for you it's not for any particular person or particular community or particular country everybody is suffering that's true. so we have to share it that's all with the spirit of uh, business that let's revive everybody down the chain anybody go out of the chain then the whole chain will collapse if the supply chain is collapsed then no garments and no garments then fabrics cannot be sold so <laughs> you know this is a chain it's a chain war i agree with you your company has been very strong in community development, you know, 
previously also i have seen that i have been to a factory also i mean there are a lot of community activities going on for the development of the community so in particular this particular time also you must be doing a lot of activities i believe uh, which help the, helps the community yeah actually uh, this is one of our uh, major uh, agenda in our company so to uh, work for the community and our csr is very strong within our group or workforce and and also outside the, we have first time we have established the uh, pediatric burn unit in dhaka medical college which is the government medical college but the, for the kids the pediatric unit i mean the hdu and icu unit set by us so it's a huge work and we did it and we are still maintaining that and we have employed a lot of uh, physically challenged people around age 16 17 still counting so we are working on that part and our as usual our as you know perhaps i don't know i don't know so our medical is totally free 100% free for the workforce for the workforce employee and 60% for the family so this is a, a great uh, favor to them and also we have another 42 welfare activities uh, with the employee from the company so these are the apart from that with when this this crisis started we uh, went beyond that and apart from that also tasneen and then the rana fashion tragedy you know that we are helping still couple of families we are taking care of them so they are on our payroll they are not working in our company but we pay them regularly until their kids are big and once they are big they are they can do job we will accommodate them if they want so these are the csr we have started and we are working very uh, religiously then apart from that in this crisis we have uh, supplied pp to the hospitals mask and then we we uh, initially we for first 10 days 1000 uh, every day 1000 lunch we have served for 10 days now we have given all this work to the uh, ngos those who are doing it and uh, we are uh, as i initially discussed with you informally that the awareness program we distributed leaflet and everything to the nearby our community factory and although in our office and nearby house houses about the awareness how to uh, respond in in uh, if com if COVID nineteen uh, if they are affected with COVID nineteen, so these are the things we are doing it continuously, and we'll keep on doing. It. And uh, a different uh, 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 also we have in in Khagrachuri. I don't know whether you heard this thing. It's absolutely remote remote areas. There also we have arranged uh, food. Then in Ramadan we have arranged iftari for the people and distributing masks, manufacturing masks, distributing to the doctors. So we are doing it in our own way, whatever means we have with limited resources. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. I mean, so many activities you're doing during this time. I'm and sorry, uh, so one thing we need to mention, you know, like in, in one village, we are taking care of 100% people get food uh, three times a day. So in one full village. So that is our uh, responsibility. That's wonderful. So, I come to the next point, you know, which is uh, one of the most talked about points in the denim industry is the sustainability. And do uh, you think that sustainability, it, it has gained momentum and uh, many companies, including yours also, have worked a lot on those uh, sustainability. So now coming into the future, what do you see uh, the future of sustainability? In sustainable development, perhaps we are, we are one of the pioneers in denim industries. We first started this uh, uh, less chemical or without chemical finishing. And then we have uh, recovering the caustic soda and the uh, indigo recover. So a lot of things we have developed, but the response from the buyers is not that great. So investment is huge. And we are setting up equal app. Uh, by this time, it was supposed to finish, but unfortunately, because of coronavirus situation, it, it is delayed. So once it's over, we'll finish it 
um, the building is ready some machines are installed some machines yet to come so the sequel lab will be in place that is absolutely give the uh, direction for the uh, washing uh, sustainability washing means because we are using uh, in uh, in washing we are using acid wash and and lot of things we are using chemicals so this we want to stop it so that will be a great move once our ecolab is in force so we will show them how to do the well. but buyers and the consumers had to change their little mindset because chemical and without chemical cannot be the same it will be similar but not the same but this is the all the mindset you know like if you eat sugar some have somebody has habit of eating sugar when you have diabetic you take sweetener sweetener initially you don't like but in the course of time you like it then you don't like sugar that is how you know like the change graduation change gradual change is the uh, next uh, biggest challenge i i consider in this way so buyer has to little bit take go little aggressive in terms of and also we are using 100% recycling in our spinning 100% recycling so from cotton when we go for yarn we recycle recycle two times recycle so this is one area we are taking care then in terms of chemical we are uh, we are recovering as i said caustic soda caustic soda indigo lot of things we recover in terms of energy yes we are the first platinum lead certified plant in the world in the world okay yes in the world we are the first platinum certified so we save lot of energy 100% rain water we are harvesting we have a big lake and that lake is also used for you know like uh, uh, fire hydrant so this is multiple use and we farm fish so this fish again goes to the dorm because all our employees 80% of our employees stay in our dorms so so we have to take care of them uh, you know like they they take fresh vegetables from our uh, cultivation farming and then from fish farming they get fresh fish so these are the things you know like and uh, in our uh, uh, rnd also every day they are looking for some uh, sourcing of the sustainable yarn and to make sustainable fabrics from our end we we'll give them a total solution up to washing because we have a big sample unit so they they make garments we have our designer they design garments and we'll show them most importantly most sustainable thing is i consider as digital library so you can go to our web page we have a digital library yet to come in full operation because it's on the way because of the corona virus we could not finish it but 80% 90% is ready now again the work is going on i believe another 7 to 10 days we will put it in the web page so but it's not for all to see but those who are genuine customer or buyer intends to show interest then we will give them the password and they can see the digitally so no need to go like everywhere to uh, uh, that meal meal uh, yeah. meal weeks in different uh, countries in the world they do not have to move we can show them the fabrics the wash and the full garments itself how it looks like not one but different wash so they can see all this projection and it's 360 degree they can turn it with their finger 360 degree the uh, washing and the garments so this is a new technology all together we are providing to our web page so it's a very uh, ultra modern and absolutely uh, uh, new technique i would say nobody has in at least in the textile industry nobody has the digital library which looks like actual thing so we created the image with high resolution camera very professional camera and then we have a studio setup so we did we spent a lot of money for that for making digital it's not that we took a picture and put it in the uh, uh, web page and you see sometimes red sometimes yellow sometimes blue it's not like that you will get the real real picture 
and you can zoom it. Yes, in, in, yeah, you can. So it's a absolutely new concept, and we are uh, giving uh, the, uh, we are uh, introducing this web page, uh, this digital library, within a couple of days. That's wonderful. So I mean, you for sustainability side, you are very you know committed to it, and you are going to still going on investing in the sustainable productions, whether it in all all aspects. We have come to stay in this business and we'll do professionally, definitely. But the biggest challenge as I consider now is the R&D, low cost fabrics with different varieties. Not the, it, it doesn't, it should not look cheap, but cost is come, low cost, but uh, different varieties of wash and different uh, varieties of fabrics that we are in the process of manufacturing hopefully we can show it another one month or a lot of later latest design so that will you know reduce the uh, cost of fabrics eventually the cost of garments that will be in the affordable limit but we consider when the post coronavirus situation will be something like that the clothes cannot be their first priority the first priority will be their food and their rents Safety. house or, that is their top priority because they don't have enough money at that time. Since I'm talking about the mass production or mass scale people, where it looks like pyramid, you know, where at the bottom end. Bangladesh cater either lower end or mid range. But high end also some people cater, but not in a big way, which Vietnam does in a big way, if you compare with the other country. So I consider that low cost, different varieties, versatile fabrics, with different wash, if you can produce with the buyer, they possibly get catch the market very quickly with their limited resource of the consumers. Because they are, that is not their priority. You know, they cannot buy like $60, $70, $30. When they can get in $10, $12, that is their affordable limit. At one point, in due course, maybe they will again back to normal situation. But it will take time, I'm sure. The economy will not price. come to back, not within very short time. It's not possible. It's going to take time. So initially, probably we are going to see a lot of uh, price reductions in terms of uh, end product and differently. It's a part of business. I consider this is part of business. Mm -hmm. Let's take it as a spirit of business. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so instead of afraid, I mean, I believe personally, my philosophy is fortune favors the brave. So if we really and and sometimes you see the crisis creates also opportunity like if you look at the some companies chinese company who is now billionaire came into the top list they are selling with the mask and the pp they are now 14 billion dollar company from zero to hero and share price goes down so hero is become zero <laughs> you understand and oil price goes down so lot of changes in this scenario so to, how it will come back i don't know because i am not but as bangladesh bangladesh macroeconomy is very good stable as you know i perhaps yeah. our uh, gdp growth was close to 8% all uh, last 2 3 years so we are heading towards very nice economy but unfortunately uh, this year i don't know how much the drop will be gdp drop will be in in reality but We'll come back. We'll, we are fighters. Definitely, we'll come back. We have that courage, and we have the uh, we have the sincerity uh, to work hard work to come up with the new situation. Cope with the new situation. Definitely, I believe so, and really, I wish you all the best for that. I'm very sure that that will be possible, <laughs> because Bangladesh has come up, you know, so strongly in the last ten years with all the, you know, uh, the efforts odds. And against all the odds. So uh, coming to next question about denim, you know, you have, you know, you've been in denim such a long time. What is the basic changes you see in the denim coming in the next near future? Couple of things I have uh, addressed that sustainability could be another uh, one we should uh, address. And then, as I said, we are depending on two regions, basically Europe and America. So we have to diversify our uh, uh, portfolio, like 
we are we are doing with Canada, Australia, Japan, New Zealand, or South Africa. That is not in a very big way, but I consider personally China and India could be our at one point they will be our biggest customer because both the economies were going well at one point. I thought it is very near, but unfortunately, uh, because of the situation, a lot of changes will be there because. As you know, the, the Taiwan started with garments, Thailand started with garments, and um, Indonesia started with garments, and eventually Malaysia started with garments. So slowly they give, leave their business and they gone for high value added items like electronics and others, so forth. China at one point, they cannot afford garments to make because the salary of the workers went very high. So some thousand dollar plus. So it's not their affordable living. So eventually, we are expecting India economy is also good at one point. So they will also uh, need garments. It's a huge, these two customer or these two country we can one get eventually. <laughs> then whole Bangladesh will be, if the whole Bangladesh garments starts garments factory, even then we cannot supply. Yeah, because it's so one third of the whole population. Yes, one third of the whole population. So. I hope that things will change, but very difficult to predict, you know, like very lot of uncertainties at this point. Things will change definitely in which direction, I don't know, but we are ready to cope up with the situation. We are keeping ourselves ready. So basically, I think uh, the mix of uh, marketing, export mix of Bangladesh will change in the near future. Yeah, and also new yeah. products. And new products also. I mean, uh, you will go in a more high value added, uh, probably, uh, you know. Yes. yes. High value item for the near future, I don't find any prospect. Because very, very little prospect will be there. Mm. Because uh, the limited income group or the general mass consumers, they, they will have shortage of fun. That's for sure. That's sure. And uh, in terms of consumer, you already mentioned, you know, that, okay, they will be in, uh, you buying clothes will not be the first priority. But even whatever they buy, of course, prices on one point you already mentioned that they will definitely want to buy a cheaper clothes. Any other you, uh, thing you see that uh, their behavior will change in some other way? Behavior in different markets? Yeah, behavior change, of course, because uh, some of the American big companies they have they are filing, and some of them already filed for Chapter 11. So the impact is in Bangladesh, definitely. They they are not going to pay whatever they made in Bangladesh. With chapter 11, you know the consequence. So, but this is also true that online business is coming very popular. That is also another avenue uh, opportunity we create in lieu of uh, shops, online purchase, online supply. So online supply is digitally supply is okay, but you have to supply the merchandise that we can make. Mm. So that there where we comes into play that they need fabrics, they need garments to supply. So this way that your consumers need clothes, that's the bottom line. And we can supply that. But some big company may survive, may not. That is uh, very, uh, very that will tell, future will tell, speak about that. But very difficult to say how their government will salvage them in uh, some incentive package or something like that. Like our government has given some, announced some package. They're giving uh, first three months a salary to the government's export oriented garments as a loan, uh, interest free loan, interest free loan, payable in next one year in an installment. So this is one good uh, ten. They're also announced for small, medium and large scale. And they have announced 1.25 million to 1.25 million uh, families to provide uh, rice and uh, taka for a couple of months you know, during the crisis. So huge packages announced from the government, but the biggest challenge again, how to channelize. So, but this is, it's not, we are not experienced in these sort of things. So we, we have to fight and eventually we come to a point where we can solve all the problems. The government is sincerely trying. The people are sincerely wants to work, and we people, the entrepreneurs, 
or the uh, owners, whatever you name it, employers, whatever, they are also very determined uh, and, and cope up with the situation. They are preparing themselves like that. Uh, and there's a lot of talk talk about protection, safety and protection. And uh, of course, uh, Bangladesh is very strong in terms of uh, I mean manufacturing and so you're playing a big role in manufacturing uh, protective equipment. So also that uh, that is also affecting in, in terms of uh, denim in some way. Uh, can denim also be a part of the production equipment at some point of time? Or are you developing anything which is uh, something which can be Use as a protection. Uh, yeah, that we have in mind some sort of fabrics to uh, manufacture, but you need to. Uh, this is something time consuming. If something new, if you want to start, that need to be tested first and got it approved by the uh, authorized uh, organization. You cannot just tell that, okay, I made with denim and this will work. And this should not be the idea. And this is, we should not do that. Rather, we are uh, trying to, um, we are in our R&D, we have already told them to find out some yarn which is, uh, which can resist this sort of virus and, and, and then we can make gar fabrics out of it and then we can supply it for making masks or whatever PP, whatever you say. But this is, um, all of a sudden it's not possible because you need to have a test and yeah. as I said, that our factory is not fully operational because we have a lot of experts working in our company from India, from Turkey, and from China and Hong Kong. So all these people have gone to their destinations. When they come, then our whole team, R&D team will work in a very efficient manner. Now we have to wait for them because we have, we have a limited manpower. We are doing on the crisis management first. Mm. All crisis management going on. Absolutely. And uh, do you see any positives coming out from this situation? You know, uh, of course, this is a very uh, scary situation and very difficult situation for everybody. But do you, what are the major positives you see coming out of this? Positive is uh, our mindset. We believe in crisis also create opportunity. So you have to uh, be very uh, intelligent and you have to be very efficient and you need to think uh, forward thinking. This is very important. It's just, you, you cannot just give up. The okay, situation is bad. What can I do? It's something not like that. So we have to survive uh, with our own intelligence and with our own uh, hard work and a and, and lot of uh, research that which can go fast, how we can uh, or buyer. Now the new competition has started, I think. This is not the old game. This is altogether new game. Those who are intelligent, those who will move with a lot of uh, uh, mind uh, thinking and, and put their, all their efforts, all brains together, all, all their uh, top level brains together and the employer, employers also have to have a, a different mindset. If they think that I used to make this much money every month, I will get the same money. You forget it. If you survive this year, I will say you have done 100%. That's true. <laughs> Survival is the most important thing in the current situation. Survival. Absolutely. And then there's always an opportunity coming next always, year. Always, always there will be light at the end of the tunnel. Always. We can oh. see light at the end of the tunnel. But we are determined to cope up with the situation. Our people are geared, our people are charged accordingly. Absolutely. They are fighters, they will fight for this. No, Bangladeshi are fighters, you know, I mean, they will fight back. I'm very uh, sure. Bangladeshi are fighters, but our uh, envoy textiles uh, workforce is real fighter, honestly. I, you won't believe this. If you are here, then only understand. Even if, I, I, if you see the digital image of the factory that we are giving you the 3D, so you see the, how the factory looks like. It never goes, goes down the standard. We maintain all our standard. Moreover, we, are, we have taken a lot of safety precautions for our workers. Our isolation room has gone up. 24 hours doctor is there. 24 hours paramedical team is there. Ambulance is there. Two more 
cards always for emergency ready. So we have taken and also the safety measures, social distance, these that textile it is very easy as I said, it's not very difficult because you save huge area and small amount of people. But really the challenge is the garments. We yeah. have fifteen thousand people work yeah. in one under one roof. Absolutely. <laughs> it's a different it's a human ocean. Yeah, it's a yeah, human yeah. ocean. But but they're managing it because uh, with the poly uh, with the polythene they are separating for, from one to others. Very intelligently they're doing it. I've seen a lot of industry can very intelligently they have done it. So every problem has a solution. You don't have to worry about solution. You have to find it out. You have to put your brain together Absolutely. with all others. Absolutely. Then you'll find a solution. Every problem has a solution. We believe it. True. And we will we, we'll bounce back. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> we all will bounce back. We'll bounce back. We'll bounce back. And anything else you would like to say to the community, to the denim community and to the uh, world? Yeah, denim community. Only thing I can tell uh, our buyers or our customers, whatever you say, that uh, it's a friendly and partnership program. If we lose, we lose together. If we win, we win together. If we work together, everything is possible to do. You know, like it's not that everybody, every time you have to make a lot of money. Even without money, if you just survive. Everybody survives. Another two, three, four, six months. Then the fortune will come. But survival, you need a very uh, congenial atmosphere among the all stakeholders, so manufacturers, manufacturers, the supply chains, and the buyers. We need a very har big harmony among ourselves. Then we can survive. This is I appeal that don't get nervous. Things will change, and we have to get ready for that. Intelligently handle the situation. Use your brain. Thank, Thank you. you. Wonderful message, uh, Mr. Kutub, and I'm sure people will be following this and uh, listening to it. And let's hope we all let, let us all hope that uh, you know the best of us comes out in this moment, and we all come out of Thank it you. together. Thank you, uh, Mr. Sandeep, for your initiative. I am grateful, thankful to you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kutub. So nice luck. to have you. Thank you so very, much. Very good luck to you. Thank, Thank you. you.